give us some examples of some of the, the languages that describe maybe colors or things that Indians saw that they needed a word for? For example, the color of red in our language means tail in the wand, which resembled a blood, which was red. And also another color that would uh, kind of describe about what you were talking about, like, like green, for instance, and blue, which were in the same, same word, Tlitzonahuan, which is either blue or green. Nahuan means, Tlitzonahuan means it looks like green. Or that's what the word meant. If you were to try to describe your home, this river, and what it means to you, how would you describe that in your native language? The 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 word for our our river our is hunt hunt, and I think our river was just like a a. a a vein, just like we have in our bodies, is like an artery where we always expect something to flow through it, or or our body's good, you know, keep us healthy, and the stuff that the river provides for our for us, like the fish, sturgeon, and all all other edible things in the river. I notice that you have a memorial that you said that has been here for ten years. People who have who valiantly fought for this country. Why was it important for you to recognize veterans here? Hmm. That well, that's that's good. Uh, the reason is that we we as Indians were not supposed to have been either uh, invited by Uncle Sam to show in his his forces, but but then there was a rule that no Indians were allowed to be in, in the army at one time, but then they had this thing where a lot of just volunteered, and we we've, we've had we've had all 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 the forces like the army, the navy, merchant marine, in all phases of the services that we've all been in, like we've been in, in fact, we have our veterans from World War I to the wars that's going on now. And the reason we started our own memorial wall was that even though we as veterans, I am one of the veterans, that we had uh, uh, the distinction of making our choice whether we want to join the VFW, the American Legion, which is here in Hoopa, or any other any other things that had to do with a honorable discharge veteran. But then a lot, lot of our veterans didn't want to join the Legion because some of them were trying to give up drinking and didn't want to drink and partake in drinking. So ours is wasn't that bad, which was started 10 years ago. And right now I'm the commander, acting commander, let's put it that way. But I, w I went in during the Korean, Korean, Korean time, Korean war time, and I was honorably discharged. And, and that's why we got together one day. A lot of the veterans needed help, like, they needed papers to get filled out. We've invited some uh, veterans from like Oakland, San Francisco to come up, talk to our veterans, how to fill out the forms and which, which they did. And I think it worked out good with them helping us fill out the forms and on like, you know, like you get 100% and that's for a veteran, that's, that's $2,300 a month. Still, I, I think that's not enough for what, what they done while they were in service. For instance, like this, what they call the uh, PTSD, which is, would be post-traumatic stress. 
development, you know, it's bad, bad for the mines and stuff like that. And the persons that were wounded and other things. But like, like I say, I'm glad that I had a helping hand with their, to get for, for the veterans that are now getting their 100%. And, uh, but I like to say also that we had a guy here, he was in Korea also, he was wounded. He got each $2,300 a month, but then he had some problems. But I, he was a Hoopa tribal member at one time, but he changed to the Klamath, Klamath tribe up in Oregon. And uh, I'm glad, glad he got us started and I always remember that. And this one we haven't talked about. If the BIA was still in control, do you think that there would be language classes being taught here? Well, if in the boarding house days, it was a no-no. Otherwise, if you spoke the language, you had to end up chopping wood, mopping floors, and other things that was making it hard on you because you spoke your own native language. But I think, you know, if, if, if we had our, the BIA was around, in those, I mean, the early part, I think it was, it was, uh, I don't know. Can you recall any specific stories or something that you had been told when somebody did speak their language? What punishment did they got? You had mentioned mopping floors. Or, because it was, it was almost forbidden because there was the movement to assimilate Native American Indians into the white culture. And the way that they could do that is to forbid the language. So can you recall maybe some severe punishments that happened because somebody was trying to speak the language? Well, this, uh, just like I, I said a while ago, they were they were punished by doing ex, extra chores that because of talking the native language to one another. It wasn't the only. It depends on how many were speaking at that time. They were all punished for that that reason. And some were allowed to go home at that one time. They were allowed to go home to visit, but these people were had to stay on the campus to do those chores for speaking the language. Do you tell young people this, that at one time? Yeah. We, uh, we, all, we, all, we always tell them, tell them the things that happen. Like, like, like I say, I'll bring up the word elder again, like we were always told by the elders that one time that we were going to do our cultural things that we've been doing for years. And if we can't do it as like we used to, we'll do it as close as we used to do it. <laughs>